preliminary business. Uh, update on report to town meeting. Is that you, Ken? Yes, it is. Uh, as I described last time, I believe we were, we were going through the uh, modifications in the report. Uh, those were all made. The, uh, the articles were attached. There were two articles. One was the, uh, the drive-through in the CS district, and the other was the um, was the uh, sign bylaw, I believe, that wasn't attached to the uh, finance committee report. So they are included in the uh, report now. And that'll be going to town meeting in, in June. June 12th is the uh, scheduled time for the, for the meeting. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it was, it was not the sign bylaw, it was the uh, floodplain bylaw. And um, that will have to be done on, on uh, this meeting on June 12th or we'll be out of compliance if it's put off for another month. Well, that would be a shame. <laughs> Compliance in terms of the amount of time between our public hearing and the, and the uh, town meeting. No, in compliance with the federal laws and regulations regarding floodplain uh, insurance. Thank you. All right. So no other changes and we can consider that done and complete and ready to go? Yes, exactly. I guess I should have uh, opened up the meeting and asked if anyone's recording. Here We're just we happy you're here, George. What's that? We're just happy you're here. We'll take you however you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next item is a change in paving specifications for Master Millwork. I think you skipped you over the compliance one. for uh, climbing. Oh. Um, that's not written on my agenda. Let's see. Um, you have an uh, unupdated agenda. Okay. What do you got, Ken? 1318 Compliance Report, Clemmy, 20 Burgess Point Road, May 15th deadline. Okay. Let me see if I can find that one. Well, George is doing that. Uh, Ken, we had talked in a previous meeting that the Building inspector was generating a report based on a spring a site visit. Is that report available? I do not have a hard copy of any report. He's uh, going to be online. He was invited to this meeting to uh, to uh, make a verbal report. All right. I don't see. Uh... I don't see this here, but is uh, I don't see it in the planning documents either. I'm not seeing him in my um, participants. I don't know if he's. Here he is. Oh. That looks more like Bill Madden. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. He's coming. John Deacus is here. He must be looking for Clemmy. <laughs> Dave Requeen, if you can hear us, we're waiting to hear from you.
David Queen is on. Hello, David. How are you? Good. This is this is Swenson talking. How are you, Rich? How are you doing? Great. Good. All right. So we were just uh, talking about the uh, the Clemmy property, and Ken had informed us that you were going to give a verbal report tonight based on a site visit you did a couple of weeks ago or so. Well, I I don't have a verbal report plan, but I mean, I gave you my letter based on that site visit. Um, my conditions are all in writing. I mean, they're not my conditions. They're, they're my findings based on what I saw on site. Um, What's the date on that letter? I don't have it in front of me, Rich. I think. Wait a minute. Was it last fall? I read your letter last fall, um, and I thought that there was going to be an update based on um, um, what was happening in May. What What's happening in May? There's There's there was a time frame for it to be completed by May fifteenth. That's my understanding. I have not been asked by the board to go back out and reevaluate the property again. Uh, so, Ken, we have a big mis miscommunication here with Peer. I, I, I thought that you had reported that Dave was generating a report as of a site visit this spring. Dave is responsible for the enforcement of the special permit. Uh, the, uh, the planning board is, is making its own findings regarding the condition of the property. No, my question was, is that at a previous meeting, either the last one or the one before, you reported to this board that a report was in process. That's what I assumed. So Rich, what is it that that you guys are looking for? What is it that the board would like? So, David, um, last fall uh, we discussed this at length, and we under and we were told that we don't have any enforcement powers, that that all lies with you, and that um, it was agreed that it was too late to do any work in the fall with. Uh, with winter coming and the growing season over and that um, the Clemmies were gonna be given until May 15th to um, start taking action to comply with the permit. And we're, and we're five days away from that. And we've been asking now for two or three weeks, um, what's the status, how's it going? And when Ken told us that you were in process of putting a report together, <coughs> We backed off and said, great, that's exactly what we want to see. And now we're finding out that, no, that isn't the case. We haven't done anything. <clears throat> well, also, I think our extension was to have ground cover there by May 15th, not to start May 15th. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so all I, I can tell you, Rich and the board, all I can tell you is that that when, when I go by there, it doesn't look any different today than it did when I wrote my letter early winter, late fall. When I contacted Bill Clemmy, he, he informed me that he was not going to do any additional work. And he's the one that requested this meeting because of the phone call that I made to him. So I can't speak to your intent, okay? So you guys put those conditions on. You have to decide as a board whether you feel he's met those, those conditions and your requirements. I cannot do that. I can tell you what I see on the ground and I've done that. So as a board, you have to decide whether you're satisfied with that or not. What happens, Dave, what happens if we decide we're not? Then that I can't tell you how to act in that case. If you guys choose to withdraw that special permit, he now does not have the approval that he requires and it becomes an enforcement action that I will take over. So, so come May 15th, if that ground cover isn't in place 
and the repair to the road, which I believe was also part of the, the um, special permit, isn't done. And we decide that he hasn't met those demands and we, and we pull the permit for the lack of a better way of putting it. And it falls into your hands at what, at, at, what happens then? It becomes an enforcement action. I understand it's, that, but walk me through it. I, I've never been involved in an enforcement action before. What, so, what are the steps? So, so when it becomes a enforcement action, it falls under due process. So, so he, he will get a violation notice as he did in the beginning of this process, which was about two years ago now, uh, he'll have a time to comply with that. Um, We've already given him the time to comply. Correct. But now if he, if he, if, if you, if you were to pull his approval, it's now a new violation <clears throat> or it could just become, it, it could become a, a it could become a legal proceeding, but that's not something that I want to discuss in this meeting. It, it, it hasn't happened yet, and I don't want to. I don't want to speculate. No, that that I think that's right, David. If we if that would have to be in an executive session. Correct. So, um, it's I've been by there um, as well. It, nothing's been done. Um, nothing's going to happen in the next five days. So I think it. What you're telling us, David, is our our only course of action right now is to rescind the special permit um, on the fifteenth at our next meeting or whenever that is, and turn it over to you for, for enforcement. Rich. I'm going to speak to, to you and the board here, and I just want to be clear. I'm not advising you on your course of action here. Oh, no, I, I, please, no. I, I, appreciate, I, I appreciate that. I just want to make sure I understand the process because I've been down about three of them so far, and I want to make sure that I get it right this time. Yeah. You, you as a board approved a special permit with conditions. If those conditions have not been met, and if that approval is contingent on those those conditions, then you as a board need need to make your determination and your findings. However, you choose to respond. If revocation of that approval is is the way you choose to go, it will become an enforcement action. All right. So, but given the fact that um, from the report that you generated uh, last fall, early winter that clearly states that uh, the special permit was not complied with. And given the fact that um, conditions haven't changed one iota since then, um, so I'm speaking to the board now, it seems to me that we should, um, one, understand the, the process of pulling the permit and turning it over to the building commissioner for enforcement, but we also need to understand what other actions are available to us, if any. And I don't want to, I don't want to hear, I don't want to talk about any uh, new permits or extending the permit or anything like that. The permits done is, is we're, we're all done with that. We, uh, we're going the other direction. I just direction. don't understand the revocation. What, I'm not sure what that means. I don't understand why it has to be revoked. If he, if we he, revoke it, he hasn't complied with it, George. But if you revoke it, a, it no, right now, you for the lack of a better way of putting it, and I'm going to put my blue collar back on here for a second. He's thumbed his nose at us. We've we've discussed it several times. He knows exactly what I, is the I'm aware of that, Mike. But if we revoke the special permit. What's that do for us? That puts it in the hands of, of Dave, so now he can enforce the action. How can you enforce something you just revoked? Well, then leave it in place and let Dave enforce it. <laughs> no, I just, you know, I, I fully understand. I Nothing's been done there. I understand that. Uh, I'm just trying to get the logistics. Well, so by I, Dave, by Dave's own description, his discussion with Mr. Clemmy was he he was told point blank that he has no intentions of doing anything more to that property. So he's, he's, 
he's put us on notice that he is not going to comply with a special permit. So let's, let's con not continue to waste time. We've burned two years playing games with this subject. Let's take it to the next level, whatever that next level is. Well, I, I think we need counsel involved. That's, I guess that's my point. Yeah, I would, I would I agree. Uh, uh, Dave Requina, uh, I have a question on process. Yes. Um, can, can this planning board um, turn, um, make a determination that the permit has not been complied with and turn it over to you for enforcement without revoking the permit? Do you know? And, and if you don't, that's fine. Um, I'd have to put a little bit of thought into that. Maybe, um, maybe we can speak with um, town council on that. The, I don't know what, what the enforcement is because he technically has the approval. So basically we're enforcing against a condition on an approval. Um, what's the enforcement against a condition if he has the approval? So um, it's- well, Keep in mind, this is all about a conditional approval based on him complying with conditions which have not been met. It's, but is, is the approval conditional? That's the question. Is it- All right, yeah. With conditions. It's, it's, a, it's an approval with conditions, but is, it, is the approval conditional upon the completion of those conditions? Uh, I think it's semantics, but it's, it's important. It's irritating so, is what it is. I, I understand, Mike. Yeah, I, 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 and my only point is I just don't want to do it wrong and have to start all over again. I agree. George, I, yeah, I, I understand your point well. Let me, let me ask one more question. Um, I'm reading a letter from uh, the neighbors, um, and it implies that the original special permit has expired. And does it, does anyone have a copy? I, I've been looking and can't find it. Have a copy of the original special permit to see if I, I'd like to know if there is a expiration date on it. There is an expiration date on it, and it was extended by the board in the fall of, of last year. That's being disputed, as you know. What is that expiration date? Hey, George, I think Bill Madden has some input. I see him raising his hand. I don't, I don't <clears throat> think so. If, if you want me to input, I will. I mean, I, I think the expiration date expired two years after it was authorized, and the extension that you granted was required to be recorded at the registry of deeds to extend it just like a modification to a special permit would be. So effectively, the permit is lapsed and uh, there is no permit there. He can't be doing any work out there without, he can't be doing anything there. There is no permit in place at the current time. He, the only alternative is for him to reapply. And that would give the planning board an opportunity to, you know, further enhance the conditions should they be so inclined to grant condi conditions to, uh, to um, allow the project to be restored. And, you know, there's things like surety that could be placed um, in the form of, in the form of a bond that would guarantee it getting done at some point in time that, and that's in the event um, the applicant chooses to, to reapply for his lapse permit. I mean, it's pretty clear the special permit's good for two years and uh, you can grant extensions up to six months, but they, they also have to be, be recorded in the same manner as the original permit. So right now, I mean, you, you guys w went out of your way to grant a six month extension. Um, you know, nothing was recorded at the registry to formalize the extension. So uh, effectively it, it has lapsed. So there, there is no permit. He can't do anything out there, period. And that's not to the satisfaction of the, the people that, uh, that I prepared the letter for, the families that, out there at Burgess Point. You know, they're looking, for, they're looking for a remedy to the situation. And as Mike King pointed out, you know, he just thumbs his nose at you guys and does what he wants. And 
that's uh, that's fine. I guess that's the choice any anyone might have to make, but you know, it's not satisfactory. Um, and if that, you know, just by way of example, is if that permit had a bonding requirement associated with it, the planning board would be able to go back, call that bond in, and get that project fixed. And it, and it just doesn't. We don't have that mechanism. There's no mechanism to do that. So, you know. And Dave Vaquiner, this is Ron Enos. Should we, should we not at this point be thinking about daily daily fines of some kind until it is completed? I mean, I don't understand any, how, how are you going to get this guy to do what he's supposed to do? What, what's the fining mechanism at this point though, Ron? There, there is, he was granted a special permit. So if, if, I, if, if the approval remains in place, I don't see I don't see a finding mechanism. He was already issued the approval retroactively. So um, with, with all due respect, Bill, if even when, when it comes to special permits, the two year time frame is to exercise a special permit. So those, those trees were cut before the approval was issued. So in the absence of specific wording in the conditions, it's, it's going, it's, it's, it, I don't see that I have an avenue for issuing any fines at this time. This is a joke. I, I, again, I think we need to get to council because if you're back to square one, there's no permit, then he performed work without the permit. So. Which Mr. Chairman, he did that initially. Yes. Right? So he did this work without the benefit of a permit to start. So this all began with a notice of violation. This began with an enforcement order. That's how this started. Just to remind everybody. Hmm. To, in order to come into compliance with his enforcement order, he was required to apply for the approvals retroactively. He applied, he came in front of the board, pled his case, and the board granted him his special permit. If he's not in compliance, and if he doesn't meet the, the intent of the board, if, if he if, if you don't feel like he has done what you requested him to do, then that's a, that's an action that the board needs to take against that special permit. But isn't that what we've been talking about? That we we don't feel he has met the, the requirements of the special permit, and now the deadline that we set is up, or it's up in five days. That's it is what you've been talking about, Mike. And as I said, I'm not advising you on what to do. I'm just asking, answering questions that have been asked. I, and I, I appreciate that, Dave. Um, I'm not, at this point, me personally, I'm not asking for your advice. What I'm asking is if May 15th comes, the ground cover issue and the road repair issue, which were part of the special permit conditions aren't met, now he is in violation of the deadline. Now it becomes actionable by your words. Right. What does that mean? Does, does that mean it, to the other gentleman, I'm, I'm not sure who that was, does that mean daily fine starts until he complies? Does it mean that it's a legal action and we take him to court to ask him to comply or force him to comply? What, what exactly takes place when somebody says, yeah, I told you I would do this, but nah, I'm not going to do it. Mike, well, that, that becomes a enforcement action, and the details of that action I will not discuss in this meeting. If and when that time comes, the 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 enforcement process will begin. Okay. So if we put it on the agenda for the next planning board meeting, or we well, have what I would rather do is uh, seek permission of the board to speak with council. Right. Um, can I make a can I make a suggestion, George? Could we um, have an at our next planning board meeting? Uh, could we invite council to an executive session? We could always ask them that. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I'm with you. I want council, um, I, and because it's it's time for it's time for enforcement. We have to and we have to we have to penalize him now. 
and we have to penalize them severely um, to rectify the situation because everything else has failed. But that being said, um, according to Mr. Madden, we did not properly extend the special permit till May 15th, um, which effectively, if Mr. Madden's correct on that, I'm not questioning you, uh, Bill, I just wanna keep all options open here. Um, if, if that is true, I do not want to try to take any steps now, assuming that the special permit expired last fall. Uh, because we didn't record the extension in the registry of deeds. That would just create another legal battle that would be fought and contested and, and dragging all this out. Um, I would much rather uh, us document the current conditions of the site on May 15th, um, and have that on our record that we can compare against the permit, uh, properly extended or not, we all know what we all know what the conditions are today, and what they're going to be on the fifteenth, and what the what the permit says. And there's a big discrepancy there. And then we can meet with town council in executive session at our next meeting, and um, hopefully with David Requina as well, and come up with an enforcement process that we can start executing immediately. Does that make sense to anybody or, or do I, am I way off base here? No, that makes sense. I'll plan on being at that meeting, Rich. All right. Um, do pe you people understand what I mean about the, for, for right now, not, not getting wrapped around the axle about whether the permit was extended properly or not? The and, permit and, was extended properly. It was done at a regular meeting of the board and they've made the findings that the extension should occur until May 15th. What happened was that it wasn't filed on the land records by the uh, applicant. So what does that mean to the status of the permit? Is the extension valid? Uh, what, uh, what answers? That's one of the questions, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I, I guess my point was, um, I don't want to take any action on on that aspect of the situation until the executive session uh, at our next meeting with town council and Dave Requina. I just want to give council a flavor of what he's going to be asked. Oh, yeah, sure. Would you like someone to raise their hand to go out and, and uh, talk to uh, town council? I'll, I'll be happy to do it. Um, I'm just making some notes here. So when we set this up, he can be prepared. Yes, Dodge, in, the me in the meantime, I see another hand up here. Yeah, this is uh, John Dekas. Um, every time I step out my front door or walk into my driveway, I'm looking at a wasteland over there. I am breathing in dust that comes across from that property. He created a wind tunnel there. I have a continual dust problem. I have, there's invasive species over there, weeds growing. I've got to put up with all that seed that flies around whenever the wind blows in that tunnel, winds that blow down huge trees. I'm living with that. I'm living with a road that I had to fix partially because he wouldn't do it according to your conditions, which he was supposed to report under your conditions immediately and let you know that he was going to fix it and do it under your supervision. I've been living with that for four years since those trees have been cut down, maybe five now. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, my, my patience is gone and I'm not gonna wait another four years. I personally am consulting with an attorney. I don't want to go that route. I want, to, I want my town to fix this problem and, and take care of it uh, by enforcing their rules. Rules that, by the way, the town violated by, by allowing him to cut those trees down when they, because they didn't at the time understand uh, their own law. Check that one out if you, if you want. Also, he came in and, and, and told the town and the town accepted 
the fact that he supposedly had a, an agricultural exemption to cut those trees down. And I got a call from Mr. Queener, I got a call from Mr. Slavin, I got a call from all kinds of people from down away and telling me, Jesus, there's nothing we can do about it. And they never even asked him to produce that, that uh, non-existent exemption, agricultural exemption. I mean, how much incompetence can I put up with when I have to live directly across the street from that? And I've been patient. I'm trying to be a good citizen about this, but I've lost it. I'm telling you, I've lost it. Uh, I'm going to do something about it. When you speak to your, your attorney, please indicate to him that you have, have a very disgruntled neighbor and maybe others who um, I, I'm not going to sit around uh, any longer and, and allow this to continue um, with this do nothing policy that the town has. And, because I'm blaming now the are town. You, are, no you suggesting, uh, are you suggesting legal action to the town? I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Are you suggesting legal action against the town? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, but I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm that. considering that, and I'm going to get advice um, about that, and I'm going to find out where I stand on that. But I am so frustrated at this point that I am considering that, and I'll probably. Um, Mr. Dekus, I need to, Mr. Dekus, I need to interrupt you. Um, the policy of the town is that people who have uh, threatened lawsuits against the town can't participate in the public meetings. So, so Mr. Gun, we're going to have to. We're, we're going to have to. Either. Um, Mr. Clemmy's been doing that at all your meetings, uh, so, suggesting illegal uh, action. And never, no, you never told him that. George, anyway, so George, yes. Anyway, I just wanted to know where I stand. And, and understand, uh, we, understand, we understand, sir. You've told us that before, and and we understand where you're coming from. We're trying not to you, I have not told you about legal action before. This well, is the first time. And say we we we're going to end that discussion. George, this is Carl. Can I have a, make a request? When we have uh, members of the community speak, uh, I don't know Mr. Madden, I don't know Mr. Dinkus, I don't know Mr. Enos. Can we have them uh, state who they are and who they represent when they speak um, for the record? Well, uh, I don't think this was posted as a public hearing and I think it's getting a little out of hand. Yeah, I think we need to shut it down, George. So... We have direction. We're going to uh, discuss the situation with council, and we'll take action from there. So let's let's recap. Um, I before our next meeting, I'd like to understand what the date of the permit was that it was created and the date that it expired. I would like to understand if the permit is actually valid, or if the extension if the if the extension is valid or if it's not valid because it wasn't recorded and um, I want to call for, call for an executive session at our next meeting with town council and uh, building commissioner Requina so who can who can get the dates on the permit uh, initiated and expired and um, who can answer the question about whether the extension to the 15th was valid or not. Um, Ken will have those dates in the office in the um, in the decision. Okay. Um, I, I think what we who's going to who's going to brief uh, town council on the background here. You're all going to do it in the executive session. Uh, we, we'd like to give him some background information ahead of that. I, I can do that with the board's authorization. Um, I'll move that we authorize George Barrett, chairman of the planning board, to brief uh, Wareham Town Council Richard Bowen on the situation regarding the Clemmy property. Second. Motion was made by Richard, seconded by Mike King. Let me see. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Sam? Aye. Mike King? Aye. Mike Baptiste? Aye. Uh, Richard? Aye. And where do we stand with Kyle? Does he vote on this? <laughs> it is a special permit. 
this is more of a legal action, so I would say the board could vote. And uh, Carl? Aye. And I for the chair. Unanimous. Okay, next, uh, next item. I can jump back and forth here. You got it right at your fingertips, Ken? Master Millwork. Okay. Change in the, in the, in the uh, plan specifications. Um, thank you, Dave uh, Requina, for jumping in. I see you. All right, Mr. Chairman. Steve, you're Steve welcome. already left. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> We're still here, Mr. Chairman. Just turned off my camera. Okay. Uh, up yeah. at Master Well Works, there was some uh, changes requested in, I think, paving thickness. That's correct. And was there something else also? I don't know. George, what are they going to do for? if you wanted a general uh, report on the uh, compliance with the special permit? Say that again, Ken. Uh, it was, if, uh, apparently, there was a couple of people that did site visits to the, uh, the site uh, and came up with uh, questions about the, con the construction uh, process that was going on and what was being done with the landscape at the area. Bill, are you here to address these? Uh... Um, yes, I was here to address the paving. I wasn't um, really brought up to speed on any other other issues, but I was here to talk about the paving more than more than anything. But I can do my best to assist in any other question you may have. Yeah. Uh, from what I gather, a request was made to change the paving thickness that would still be greater than what the town requires, but not not what's on the special permit. Yeah, on this, uh, with this respect to the paving thickness, we had specified. I think it was five inches of mix on the on the on the uh, on the site, um, and we're talking just about on our on our site whatever was specified for in the uh, for the trench patch and within the layout of the town town ways. Um, that is as per the plan. the The discussion we're having is about the pavement thickness on the uh, the site itself. So the uh, the the owner and his contractor, they did their own cost benefit analysis of things and they felt that the, the cost associated with putting five inches down um, was, was excessive when they consider what could, could occur in what the, um, what the, the life, life of, the, of four inches of pavement would mean. And they concluded that, the, that it was economically preferable to go with four inches as, a, as opposed to the, the five. So they, uh, they requested a reduction in pavement thickness from, from, four, from five to four inches. Um, all the base requirements would still remain the same, which is, which is positive. Um, you know, as far as the pavement thickness goes, I understand fully where they're coming from. And, uh, you know, I'm just here to su support that request for reduction in thickness. The only other thing that I know about on site is there was an area of existing vegetation that was supposed to stay. And now there's a big pile of loam there, but I would assume they're going to fill that in with landscaping when they're complete. There's a pretty substantial landscaping plan. You know, we, we show creation of berms in the front of the property. Um, there, there was a, a pretty large landscaping area um, to the, I guess it's to the, to the northeast of the, the new driveway coming in, coming into the site. But, uh, you know, I have not been out there to examine what went on with that, with that clearing. I'll, I'll make it a point to get out there and, and look at it. The, uh, the area I think you were talking about is at Charlotte Furnace Road, if, if Rich yeah, can show. Uh, Richard, Richard put the plan up and that almost looks like new plantings were uh, proposed. I... There's new plantings. If you could move down towards Charlotte Furnace Road with your cursor, there's, keep going. Go up to the, go up on the, uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> the plantings I'm seeing are on this plan anyway, where the existing driveway. Right. There's a there's a berm that's called for to be constructed there. So whatever vegetation did exist, that's a drainage basin that exists. The uh, there's a driveway that went through the site where that berm is, where you, right there, where yep. that that's a large uh, landscape planting berm here. And just below that area, you can see right right there, I believe, is the area that that peep, that you might be talking about. That appears to re retain the existing vegetation in that area and then border it with uh, with new plant material or supplemental plant material all around it. If so like, if, if that's the area that book. people believe had been cleared, that would that would be it. The, the rest of the area is is affected by um, landscape and new construction. George, this is Charlie. Can I jump into this discussion a little bit? Yeah, please. Yeah. The area that uh, Bill just referred to, uh, which shows on the plan as uh, sort of perimeter of uh, uh, sort of half round lines, that was existing vegetation. All of that vegetation is now gone and has been replaced by a stockpile of loam. That it, area from uh, the existing driveway all the way to the easement has been clear cut with the exception of oh, maybe a half a dozen trees that were there as a part of the original landscaping. Everything else is gone. So that's, that's an issue unto itself. Um, the paving issue, I agree with um, uh, uh, Bill on this to go from five to four, uh, if that's the uh, applicant's wish. It is above the minimum requirements, uh, but in order for me to at some point uh, report back to the planning board who issued the special permit that the work is in compliance, uh, I am uh, suggesting the board needs to take action on the change from five to four, call it a minor modification, but put together a modification of the special permit, which will be recorded in the registry of deeds, making that official. So that when the time comes and I go out to inspect the paving, I won't be looking for five, I'll be looking for four, which will be then in compliance with the approved plan and the modification. Uh, there were two other issues that I think were brought up, uh, one of which was the uh, water main, which was originally on the plan to go in the new entrance and then go to the addition from that point. Uh, apparently in talking with uh, Dave Bernard, yes, right there, Richard. Uh, that has not taken place, but in your special permit, you wrote a provision that said that if it could not be done, that they could utilize the existing curb cut, the existing cut that they made for the original water line and just make sure that the water service is sized appropriately to handle the addition of the building. I haven't seen documents to that effect, but um, I have been told uh, that that particular analysis was done. So that uh, part of it, I have no problem with. You might want to request the owner to provide the documentation that says that they did that so that the, uh, the flow tests and so forth are satisfactory. Uh, the last thing was a change from an 18 inch base to a 12 inch base. I don't know where that ever came from. Um, the 12 inch has always been on the plan plus uh, four inches of dense graded material on top of it. And then the four inches of mix, which, which if you approve would go on top of that. So I'm not sure where that last one comes from, uh, whether uh, the owners uh, misinterpreted the plan or what it was that they were looking for, but it's always been 12 to the best of my understanding. So with those, that having been said, uh, I would request that the board uh, consider the pavement change a minor modification and that the proper document be drawn up, um, identifying it as modification number one to the special permit so that it could be signed by the board and properly filed in the Registry of Deeds in Plymouth. Uh, Bill Madden? Yes. Uh, can the change from, can you, can you technically tell me what the change from five to four is? Is this on uh, the top layer? Um, and on this, on this map here, I'll get off the landscaping map, go back to this one. Is it for all the road surfaces 
that I see here, which which areas are we talking about? Yeah, it's all. It would all be four inches. So we'd be, I think, uh, what would be two and a half uh, binder, one and a half top is what we would be putting down there. Originally designed, it was three inches of binder and two inches of top. Okay. Um, do you have any recollection or any um, awareness of this 18 to 12 issue Charlie mentioned? The I don't know about the 18, but we specified originally 12 inch gravel base and four inches of dense graded on top of that. And as far as I knew, that was to be um, to remain. But I, I did not hear about the 18 inches uh, in, in my travels. So I would still expect the base to be um, 12 and four 16 inch base. Okay, uh, Richard, last comment. Richard, I, if I, I can, like to... Richard, if I can just interject, that 18 inches was in a communication from the owner of the property to Ken, and that's all I've ever seen. So I don't know where that 18 inches originally came from. I don't okay. know who suggested it, but the 12 has always been there for the entire site. So my last comment would be regarding the landscaping, and that is that. We have a landscaping plan and it clearly shows what's expected when the project's complete. And obviously people have been out there recently in the middle of this and it's nowhere near that. Um, just uh, my note is that um, I'm sure it's not that way now, but I, it's, it will be this board's expectation that what we see on this landscaping plan uh, be represented in the finished product. If, if you go with just the landscaping plan that you have, Richard, and you don't go back and discuss the issue about what was there and which is not there, you'll end up with a big hole in the middle there because there's nothing left of that vegetation, which was the original white pine stand that was there. And do you, and Charlie, are you tell, you, can you see my screen? I see your screen. Is it your, uh... Is it your impression that that white pine stand that you're referring to is represented on this drawing? Yes, it is. Would it be? It's, it's the area that is surrounded by those uh, little indications of a variety of trees that are be, to be planted. The so, new landscaping the just south of where you are. It. Right there. That's yeah. where it is. Yeah. So they would need to replicate that. Well, that right. would be pretty difficult to, but yeah, but that's beside the point. I mean, here we are again with another special permit with a condition that's not being met. Well, you so have the they, opportunity. I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry, Charlie. I mean, if they chose to knock that down, knowing full well it was supposed to stand, then, then they put themselves in the position where it needs to be replicated. <laughs> but, but how do we enforce that? That was the whole question that just came up before. We that's can't exactly, make anything happen. <laughs> that's exactly where I was going to go with this, Carl. Well, now well, we have I would another suggest situation. that the owner or, or contractor uh, come back with another plan for that area on how he's going to uh, rectify that. If, if I could offer a suggestion, uh, George, through you, uh, yeah. that the planning board uh, write a letter or have Ken write the letter if you choose uh, to the owner of the property, citing that as a violation of the permit and ask him to come in and to explain how he's going to replicate the area that he's destroyed. That, that's how it starts. And you mm -hmm. negotiate the problem, or negotiate the issue from there. And uh, whatever you negotiate from there, would, it, would be it would be difficult, if not impossible, to replicate 10 and 12 inch pines, I agree. But there's no reason with that having been done, uh, why additional plantings couldn't be put in there so that in the future, those plants, those uh, new trees will come up and eventually will be as dense as it was before. So you can request a revised landscaping plan that will intensify the density of plants in that area uh, without question, based on what's happened. I would make a motion that such a letter be generated and sent. Charlie, would that be the time also to speak about the buffer along the power lines in the back at the same time? I mean, uh, well, to be honest with you, Mike, I haven't been out there yet. Uh, you see that swale? That drainage area, that long dog legs drainage area that, yeah, right there where the cursor yep. is, 
Yes. They haven't built that yet. So uh, there was only supposed to be a 10 foot natural buffer uh, symbolized by those little, uh, little semicircular lines. lines that run from north to south. Yeah, all of that is, in, that indicates a natural buffer that should have been there. My yeah, guess is because of the buffer. density of the trees there's probably not much left, but whatever is there should have been natural. But I haven't been out there to witness it or tell you what's there. I don't know. Nothing there, it's, it's, just, it's just sand. I mean, we had a clear sight to uh, Mount Trashmore now. Well, that was probably going to take place anyway because there wasn't much of a buffer to be left. So when you have something like a 10 foot buffer, um, that's basically the remnants of a white pine forest, the minute you clear that out, that buffer is gone. That's just the reality. Um, but that's, that would be something that I would have to make an inspection. I could report back to you if you wish. Uh, I can take some pictures of it, but so far the contractor hasn't even, I know he stripped the land, but he hasn't built that drainage area yet. Um, for, what it's, for what it's worth, I did see that back line when it was initially cut. And if there were 10 standing trees in that entire 10 foot wide buffer at the end of it all, um, that would probably be a little bit of an exaggeration. It was very sparse, Mike, when it was cut. There, was, there wasn't much there, um, but and I think they removed what was standing before they were blown down onto the solar site or fall onto, the, onto our site. And as far as the tree cutting along the, the, um, the easement goes um, on the south side of the property, you know, there's evidence in there that when NSTAR or whoever did the clearing in the right of way the last time extended into that 10 foot buffer zone and some, some cutting took place um, years ago before um, this land clearing activity took place. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit going on there from, from others historically, you know, and, and um, you know, that's all I can report as far as my knowledge on that. Of the uh, the line that's used to depict existing vegetation uh, kind of exaggerates what's there. <laughs> you know, it looks like yeah. shrubbery on paper, but it's in reality it's not. It's it's never dense the way that it gets shown on a plan. It never. Yeah. So um, Michael made a motion to for this board to uh, write a letter asking for the remediation plan with the white pine that were taken down right here to the north side of the new driveway. Um, uh, last point of discussion is who's going to write that letter? Is that, Ken, is that something your office typically would do? Yes, that's something that my office would do. All right, so. I have a question as a new member. We have a violation here. So nothing is done except write a letter. It, Sam, it's my it's my impression that we're going to write a letter asking how they're going to fix it, and we'll review that plan to fix it and make a determination then. That's how I look at it. Is there any penalty involved in violating the restrictions? No, there's no penalty on a special permit. So again, so again, somebody could come in and just do whatever they want, regardless of what the special permit said, and there's no repercussion. So what's the incentive to not do whatever you want? That was the question. The, uh, if, the, if the special permit is pulled, they can't build the building. So that, that's what you have in, in this case is a, um, and the quid pro quo is that uh, they get the chance to build a building and uh, you get the chance to uh, require certain improvements to the site. But they haven't done that. Oh, so they, they are in, Charlie again, um, I would encourage everybody, if you haven't read the special permit, it is online. Uh, it's at the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds under the name of Master Mill, Walk, Master Mill Work, INC. And it's a document from, I believe, September of uh, 2019. And it spells out all of the detail of the plan and the procedure to go forward when there is a change made to the plan. That would include the uh, pavement 
And it would also include any questions that you have with respect to the landscaping. If they violated the permit, I believe that you have the jurisdiction to, to enforce them uh, to go back and to, to fix it. You've also got in your bylaw, in the landscaping bylaw, uh, the opportunity to secure a bond. And so I would suggest that uh, we take a look at that and see if that isn't a partial remedy. But my first recommendation is get a copy of that special permit and everybody read it or have the document in front of them when we're discussing it. And that way you'll be able to see what's there. And, and again, if, if, if what they found there was uh, not salvageable and they wanted to uh, remove it, you know, the question should have been asked up front. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, regardless of what its condition was, you're absolutely right, George. It could have been scrub oak. It could have been uh, little pitch pines 10 feet tall. But whatever is there should have been preserved as a part of the uh, uh, site improvements when it was done. Um, that's one of the things that uh, from time to time I've requested that uh, as a part of the special permit, there be a conference with the contractor and we go out there and we check the limits of clearing before anything is done. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't happen too often. Charlie, uh, George, I guess this is better suited for George. Would it be inappropriate or appropriate of us to withhold our approval of the minor modification concerning the pavement thickness until we get um, some clarification on how they're going to address this violation of the landscaping? I'm sorry, I missed most of that. There's a foolish clock going off. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if you guys can hear that. I, I think there are two different things that go on there. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think so. I think we have we have a violation of the original permit, which is blatant, and then we have a request for relief. So well, me personally, I, I would be hesitant to request relief until I get some information on how they're going to address the violation. Exactly. I, I, res I respectfully disagree on only because um, reducing the pavement thickness from five to four does not significantly change anything uh, with respect to the site, the way that the landscaping does, but it does at least keep them on schedule for being able to do what they were allowed to do and I see no reason to hold that up. I think there's, there's an opportunity to perhaps um, maybe go the extra mile just on that, but hold their feet to the fire in the landscaping. Um, but it would, it will make my job, it, it'll make my job a lot easier to be able to go out there and to be able to approve something and not be able to uh, not have to say to them, look, you're not in compliance with the plan with this paving. You've got to stop when they've got two 20 yard trucks loaded with mix sitting out there waiting to be dumped in pavers. Mm -hmm. That is a bad news thing to have happen. Yeah. So I would encourage you to, to at least support the modification for the, um, for the mix and take this other issue up separately. If they have to get a separate modification for that, they do but at least, at least the paving portion of it is taken care of, and then you can deal with that separately. But did, that would be my did, hope. Did I, did I misunderstand that they haven't even started on the building, that they're still doing- Oh, the foundation's up. Uh, much of the drainage has been completed, Mike. Uh, the next process is for them to level off and subgrade the driveway and the areas around the building so that they can then put in the uh, base material for the paving. So if you hold that up for two weeks, they might possibly be calling me and saying, hey, we're gonna put the paving down tomorrow. And I'm gonna say, you don't have a permit for five inches or for four inches yet. You're still with five. It just, that it, is gonna be bad. It, it just seems years. to me that we constantly end up with the fuzzy end of the lollipop on these deals. <laughs> and that we're making concessions for people who aren't following the special permit conditions. They come in, they tell us they're gonna do A, and then six months later, they come back and say, well, we can't do A, we want to do B. It, it, that, it just seems to be a common theme that just happens over and over and over again. And in the well, I, I don't know what led to that uh, clearing, but uh, speaking as someone that got stuck in the sand there last week, uh, 
they, they need to get some roadway down to separate the construction traffic from the the work of master millwork it's it's a jammed up site and it's uh it's impeding things and we can square away the landscaping uh yeah way before they get their sign off all right whatever i don't agree with it but if that's what the board's flavor on this is then so be it well, michael now, we have um, we have other options though as well um mean like the plumbing property no i mean I, I kind of lean the, the, the direction that, that, that you're headed here. Um, say we'll we'll be happy to to execute a minor modification once you correct this violation that you've done. How fast can you get it done, and what's the plan? Well, they don't even have to correct it. All they need to do is come in with with a, a, a revised landscape and say, "Yeah, now we screwed agree. up. We took down what we shouldn't have, and this is how we're going to fix it." Yeah, because, tell me what you're going to do to fix it and when it'll be done. It doesn't have to be done tomorrow, but, but tell me what the done. end result is. Correct. And if they don't, and if they don't do it, then we then we put, shut the permit down. <clears throat> but to Charlie's point, uh, Charlie has a valid point. Not um, just tell me what I'm supposed to do if they decide that they're on schedule to do the paving before you next meeting. Well, they what do I do? If it if, if, if Charlie, you, you're assuming that they're sitting back fat, dumb, and happy thinking everything's going along just fine and, and they have no obligation to talk to their their engineer or their owners about... Uh, I'm not assuming that, anything, this, Richard, because and, and I have... Let me finish. All right. Can I finish? Right. Um, I mean, you're, if we make a decision tonight one way or the other and that, and that the construction crew doesn't know about that decision, that's not on us. That's on them, is my point. I have known about this since about the last week in April, perhaps the week before the last week in April. And we <clears throat> had a personal call from the owner of the property indicating that they were going to do four inches of mix instead of five. And I asked him how that happened. I wasn't satisfied with his answer. And so I wrote him an email suggesting that he should get on the agenda to get that taken care of. At that time, there was no question, no uh, discussion between him and me with regard to the clearing of the land there. Although I will say back on March 5th, he did call me and ask for a meeting about the site and about some logs and some fence. And then I got an additional call after that that said, no, no, don't forget it. Uh, uh, let's postpone this meeting until I've talked to the planning office. I don't know what the course of that discussion was. All I can tell you is that he has known for a while that I've encouraged him to come here and at least get that portion of it taken care of because I can't go out there. I don't have the authority to enforce that five inches. But if they're, I can guarantee you if they're out there with a paver and trucks loaded with asphalt, they're gonna to wanna to know what are we gonna do with it if I can't put it down? And who are they gonna go after because of the cost of the mix that they've got to spoil somewhere else? It's not a good thing to do, believe me. So you, can take care of, you can take care of the landscaping issue as an issue by itself, and I believe you should, and you shouldn't go and you shouldn't play games with it. But I need to have a little bit of uh, support here on this paving thing so that when it does happen, that plan is in compliance. Charlie, what, what I'm hearing you say, and, and maybe it's a communication issue, but what I'm hearing you say is, they're, they're moving ahead with four inches, regardless of what this board does. And that's correct. <laughs> no, that's not the impression I got with talking with them. They're just looking to get a decision from us. If yeah. they'll allow it. Yeah. Yeah. That's now because I had encouraged them to get on the, on the planning board agenda to get that taken care of so that it would not be in, in compliance if they put down four instead of five. Well, uh, as I said last week, I, I don't know if I said it in the meeting, I thought they were going to be on last week's agenda, but uh, anyway, we encouraged them to uh, do that tonight, and here it is. So, Mike King, where's your head? <clears throat> I'll vote in favor for allowing the change in the mix, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be a world-class pain in someone's butt when it comes to that vegetation. 
Um, do we have a motion to send a letter to resolve the landscape? That motion has is on the table. Was there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. So it was made by Mike King and seconded by Richard, correct? Yes. Is there any further discussion on that point? Yes, George. I would request that the appropriate documentation be put together, identified as modification number one to the special permit for Master Millworks to allow the um, five inches to four, that a vote be taken, and that the planning board sign it and make sure it gets recorded in the registry. That, that'll be that's next. a separate item we're, we're that, talking about be, the letter right that'll now. be next Charlie I'm sorry apologize <clears throat> uh, so if there's no more discussion I'll call for a vote all in favor Sam no uh, let me see uh, Mike King hi Richard hi uh, Carl uh, I <laughs> oh, I miss yeah. Mike Baptiste. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Mike? Aye. Thank you. And I for the chair. Next, I would be looking for a motion to approve the change in pavement thickness from five to four inches as a minor modification. Minor modification number one and uh, recorded appropriately in the registry of deeds. Was that a motion? <laughs> That's a motion. But two, uh, the two, two people made that motion. Does that mean that the second one was a second? The <laughs> well, second out. one was an add on. Help me out. Is there a second? Second. Second. <laughs> Don't fight over it. <laughs> Yeah, trust me, you know, I'm not fighting over it. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Mike King? Aye. Mike Baptiste? Aye. Sam? Aye. Richard? Aye. And Carl. Carl, you're muted. Nay. <laughs> all right, and I for the chair. A point of clarification, uh, Mr. Chairman. I don't know who's speaking. Uh, this is Richard. Um, um, whose responsibility is it to, uh, one, create the minor modification form, if you will? And That's two, my office. And, and to get it recorded in the Registry of Deeds? That's their responsibility. Okay. And they have That's to show the, proof of that when they come back with the receipt from the Registry of Deeds. Okay, is that so? Just to, I just want to make sure I understand the process here. I'm not. We're not debating anything. Any modification to a special permit needs to be recorded in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds by the applicant. Anything that's filed on the land records has to be done by the applicant. They they okay. pay the money. They pay the fee. And they show us the receipt showing that it was done with the uh, book and page number. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, next. Next is a uh, acceptance of preliminary subdivision plans. Um, there are, I think, seven of them, seven, seven of them on the uh, agenda. There is another one that was submitted as well. It's not on the agenda. Um, and this is a this is a, a formal process of acceptance of the uh, subdivision, the preliminary subdivision plans at a regular meeting of the planning board. And what's the first one on the list? First one is Rocky Maple Cranberry Company off North Carver Road. And this um, is, go ahead, George. This is the they're filing filing a preliminary plan to protect their solar project already approved, correct? Well, they're filing a preliminary plan, and it just happens to protect them against the zone change of the um, that's being contemplated by a town, for town meeting. 
on the uh, restrictions of uh, solar fields. I, I have some questions in general, if I may. Can you can you can you drop your uh, screen? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. I know how to do that now. Oh, maybe I don't. Pick it up and shake it. it. There we go. So, sorry. Um, so we have, we have, um, I believe there's eight of them on the, on our agenda tonight. Um, four of them are are projects that have been to this board and approved. Um, if I'm reading all this correctly, and there's four that um, have not been to this board. Is that's that, a, that sound right? Yeah, it sounds right. Um, it's been my impression and we had a long debate. We had a good debate about this recently on one of the Borrego ones about um, them being grandfathered or not post uh, planning board uh, permitting. Obviously they don't feel they feel that they need to file these subdivision plans to protect themselves on, on approved ones. Um, these other ones I'm, I'm more interested about. Um, I, I want to understand um, how long does this planning board have to uh, review uh, these, these preliminary subdivision plans before we accept them? 45 and, days. And if that, if that, 45 days, and if that acceptance occurs after town meeting where a solar bylaw has been modified, does that impact the um, status of that uh, subdivision plan? Uh, probably not, because these were also submitted by registered mail to the town clerk, which is another way of doing it under the regulations. This is a... Um, um, uh, doubling up on the um, actions to uh, make sure that they're uh, okay with the uh, rules and regulations. I, un I understand. Mm -hmm. I would really like to know 100% for sure what, um, what puts a stake in the ground in terms of what bylaws apply and what, bylaw, what bylaws don't. And the reason I say that is twofold. Um, one, for people who have permits in hand think that their permits are in jeopardy and people in and, and then in the case of where they don't have permits is it the date of receipt of registered letter or date of planning board acceptance i think it's very important for us to know those answers before we take any action it's both the registered letter and the um, planning board action acceptance it's either or and they're doing both there, there's a contradiction there our bylaws say the the uh, clock starts when submitted to the planning board. There it also is, says registered mail as well. It, it, also, it also says you can sub, you can <coughs> you can submit it to the town clerk and have it stamped in there. But our bylaw and rules and regs say submitted to the next meeting of the planning board. Uh, a, thir a third variation. Board, or, or, uh, let me read off the uh, regulation the way it's written. There's a third variation, George. The receipt by registered letter um, delivered to the planning board or accepted by the planning board. That's two different things. So the, the question still stands, which one is the legal binding of the application to a set of bylaws? And while Kent's looking that up, when does the bylaw go into effect? At the town meeting date or at the attorney general acceptance date? Once you, uh, once they submit a preliminary plan, it locks in the zoning. It's called a freezing, a freeze protection of the zoning regulations and in hand. And then they have a certain period of time to come back with a definitive plan. 
seven months to come in with a definitive plan. And when the definitive plan is approved, it's eight years of protection against <coughs> changes. And it's from the date of the actual vote of town meeting. That's the date that they have to, to uh, hit. Uh, are you 100% on those answers, Ken? Yes. The, the, um, the, the regulation says in the submission of a preliminary plan that any person who wishes to file a preliminary plan, I, I said swishes because that's the way it's printed in the, in the rules and regulations, <laughs> file, shall submit a complete and accurate application form and all plans and information as here and required by these rules and regulations to the planning board at a regularly scheduled meeting or by registered mail in care of the town clerk. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, yes, this is Richard. Um, I really would like to, no disrespect intended to anybody, but I would like to have an opportunity to double check all this. Uh, um, I, my worst fear is that this board had an opportunity to slow down some of these farms and, and, we, and we gave it up by uh, voting to accept all these plans uh, tonight. We have 45 days, we have plenty of time. Uh, we could go a couple meetings, but let's make sure we understand the process to a T before we do anything. I agree hundred percent. The, um, the preliminary plan will freeze the zoning if it's followed up. It doesn't, it seems to contradict what Borrego said about the project itself. Uh, he, he seemed to think it didn't protect their right to build the solar field. Well, that, and, that's his opinion. Yeah. And, and make, make, make pieces written a letter as well. Um, uh, that if you read the, the point of their letter is that they're scared of the same thing. So it, it this board really needs to take the time and, and work with uh, council to understand what's going on here and what options we have. Yep, I agree. I'm, I'm uncomfortable jamming this many projects into one meeting. Well, we also made the commitment that the approved projects would be grandfathered from the bylaw. That was just a recommendation. Uh, that was during our vote of support to be reported in the town meeting. At town meeting, it was just, uh, it was, it was not binding. But, I mean, I agree with that. The people that have permits, you, you can't take a permit away when they haven't done if they've done if they've complied and are, are complying. I mm -hmm. have big, I struggle with that. But uh, obviously, Zach thinks it's happened to him anyway. Um, this, I think this might be a good uh, opportunity for executive session at next meeting uh, if we can get town council there. We'll, you let him, we'll, we'll let him really rack up his billable hours. <laughs> I All right. I, I think uh, I could add a, a little bit of clarification to some of that, if I may, George. Sure. Everything that's been said so far, in my opinion, is correct. There's one other additional thing, and I think it may be why Borrego uh, and maybe why Rocky Maple uh, are concerned about this. Borrego, especially since you have issued special permits. This comes under the Zoning Act, Chapter 40A, and it talks about um, when a preliminary plan is filed, that locks in the zoning. Or in the case of a special permit, if a building permit has been issued, that locks it in. So far, unless a building permit has been issued for any of the ones that you have issued a special permit for, if they haven't exercised that special permit correctly, then that would be the reason why they have filed the, uh, the form uh, B plan to protect the zoning under which they got the special permit. So they would have to actually have a building permit in hand. If you read chapter 40A, I think it's section 10. That's what it talks about. So um, you could look at that and I think it would have some clarification to it. But the seven months deal for a subdivision plan, 
would apply in the meantime. They've got to file a subdivision plan in the meantime in order to continue with the preliminary plan in and of itself does not do the job unless they follow it up, as you've suggested, George, for the seven months, and they have to file a definitive within that seven months. But in the meantime, they could be issued, they could be working on a special permit and then receive a building permit for that and they'd be all set. So that's just my two cents for what I understand yeah. of it, having gone through this a number of times with various people. Well, with town meeting pushed out another month, uh, I think we better get a get a plan in place. I, I hear you. I understand. So, so George, Charlie just brought up a fourth um, factor that could be driving the lockdown of the uh, applicable bylaw. Uh, further, in my mind, uh, justifying adding this to the executive session meeting next meeting. Uh, are you guys available? Should it should the executive session fall on another evening? Yeah, I I generally am. All right, because I think that would probably uh, be a meeting in and of itself, and and I, I would I would encourage us to take advantage of uh, town council's calendar and us adjust to him rather than trying to force him to adjust to us. I've been down that strategy before and, and it sometimes has taken a long time to get the meeting scheduled. So yeah. if we can be flexible, it will be to our advantage. Very good. George, I said that was section 10. It isn't at section six. I apologize. Thanks, Charlie. That's pre-existing conforming, non-conforming uses and changes to the bylaw and what it does to uh, lawfully approved permits and so forth. You owe us four, Charlie. <laughs> you should have hung around last Thursday. You could have pulled me out of that sand. <laughs> you actually got stuck in it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I figured I could drive out the way you went in, and I went right down to my axles. Oh, gee. Should have called. I would have come back. <laughs> well, one of the guys there pulled me out, but oh. they need... Uh, they need 12 inches of compacted gravel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are going to take these preliminary plans under advisement. Is that what I'm... Uh... We're just going to postpone till executive session or continue till executive session. Very good. Um... Is that a motion? Sound of doing. I'd be happy to second it. I think it's a good idea that we're clear on what we're doing before we do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Yeah, I realize. Uh, all right. Is there any discussion on uh, getting clarification on the preliminary plans after meeting with council? Hearing none, all in favor? Mike King? Aye. Mike Baptiste? Aye. Sam? Aye. Um, let's see. <laughs> Did I say that? I wish I put all the names in one place. Kyle? You, you got to, you, you got to, yes. <laughs> Richard, you got to ask Richard now. Richard who? <laughs> I'm just going to say I <laughs> and I for the chair. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. What do you got next, Ken? That's uh, that's it. No, Lowe's. Oh, Lowe's. Home centers. George, would you mind if I make a comment for a minute? What's that? Uh, Mr. Bowen said he will set up whenever you want the uh, executive session with him and McQueen, et cetera. Just got off the phone with him. Any project in which the uh, planning board has approved on the solar, I asked the question, it's basically in it and it doesn't, the bylaw change will not affect it. Ken has to basically look at the other four and figure out the status. Because if you go ahead and approve any one of those new four ones, then they're also in before the law changes. And basically, town meeting is great. 
the law goes into effect when it's accepted. The attorney general only goes through the law to make sure it make, meets the requirements of mass general law. And that's it. That's what they vote on. Make sure you, you fit that. So just understand. Sorry to interrupt. But I just want to make sure you understood what the well, deal is. Well, so. left us with, it may be the special permit may be grandfathered, but they wouldn't be able to pull up. They wouldn't be able to construct. Because well, again, I'm only, I'm only giving you the information that I got was basically once the planning board approved the solar, which you've done on those four projects, they're in under the old bylaw. Let's, uh, let's uh, have that discussion at executive session. Uh, no. That's what it's going to be, but just so you understand, that's where it is right yeah. now. Sorry Thank about you. that, Pess. Don't mean to interfere, but you know, <coughs> it seems as if we don't have the information ahead of time. Thank you. Uh, what what was Lowe's doing, Ken? They are uh, putting on a uh, a special uh, addition for uh, uh, work on the side of the building. Uh, they're here to represent it, uh, I think, as well. Yes. Hi. Um. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello, board members. Um, my name is Casey Birch. Actually, do you mind if I share my screen? I kind of put a presentation together. Um, I'll, I'll I don't know if, uh, okay, perfect. Let me know if you uh, see a screen. Yeah, there you are. All right, <laughs> perfect. Um, again, my name is Casey Birch. I'm a civil engineer for Soli Engineering, and I'm here on behalf of Lowe's Home Center LLC for a modification to the existing special permit and site plan review for a proposed two rental center building addition associated with the Lowe's Home Center store located at 763 Main Street. Uh, the Lowe's is located at 763. 63 Main Street, as I just said, uh, it's within the Wareham Crossing Shopping Center. Uh, the property is approximately 12.3 acres and is bound by the interstate to the east and the commercial development, which is the Wareham Crossing Center to the south and Main Street and residential properties to the, um, oh, sorry, to the commercial to the west and, and north and Main Street and residential properties to the south. Um, the site improvements, uh, the project proposes 3,000 square, 3,000 square foot building addition located um, that will house the Tuva rental center program. Uh, that Lowe's is actually planning uh, na nationally, world, um, nationwide. So this is just one of the sites they are looking at. Um, this addition will be situated in the northeast corner of the existing building, and adjacent to the existing lumber loading canopy or the contractor loading area. Um, in addition to the building addition. Uh, we are proposing a 1,500 square foot outdoor storage cage area. Uh, this will house specific equipment such as trailers, uh, trenchers, tillers, concrete mixers, and augers, so just a few of the, the things that um, will be situated here. Uh, the cage area will consist of a concrete slab, a 12 foot high cage al uh, along the east and south. Uh, that cage is usually a black vinyl um, uh, chain fence with uh, uh, like cast iron bar uh, type style. And, um, and they also have a canopy over the majority of the cage area, which is kind of hard to see. There's a dash line. Once we get to the next slide, it'll be a little clearer. Um, in addition to that, we are also proposing an outdoor display area right in front of the canopy loading area. Uh, this will take up about 15 of the parking spaces. Um, and this will have equipment um, such as uh, towable aerators, a towable log splitter, a towable auger, um, some towable concrete mix uh, and mortar mixers, uh, hydraulic garden tillers um, that are on trailers, and um, boom lifts and some additional trailers that people can rent out. This is um, the location where your sheds are now. Uh, yeah, that 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 that's correct. I think there's some sheds down here, or maybe down here. Mm -hmm. uh, I I also apologize to my children upstairs <laughs> if you can hear them. Um, it's bedtime and the wife is trying. Uh, 
<laughs> so um, this is the kind of a close up uh, of the site improvements. This is the 3,000 square foot or 192 square foot um, tool rental center. Uh, and this is the 1,500 square foot outdoor storage cage. Um, this line right here represents the boundaries of that cage and the concrete pad. Um, this uh, the tool rental center will be accessed in the main um, location here, and you can also access it within the existing Lowe's Home Center building through some sliding doors, similar to like the garden center set up on the other side. Um, the cage for patrons, the cage can be accessed through the rear, um, through a door at the rear of the extension. There are two other additional doors. Um, this is a double door and, and this is a swing gate, but these will only be accessed by employees and um, emergency egress only. Um, to accommodate the building addition and maintain adequate circulation for emergency vehicles, the project does propose a two-way um, 24 foot wide drive aisle along the Eastern side. Um, this site drive will maintain the existing edge of pavement here. Um, that way it eliminates any additional impervious pavement that, uh, that could have been potentially pushed out into this landscape area, which we tried to avoid. Um, the, the Lowe's Tool Rental Center will be, uh, the majority of the utilities will be internal. So they'll, they'll to power this um, and to get gas to it and water, that'll all be from the existing building. Um, that won't happen. That won't occur on uh, outside the site. Um, drainage. Uh, this this building will have a downspout. It will go subsurface, um, and then we'll connect tie into the existing uh, catch basin located adjacent to the, the proposed caged area, and the Did canopy you... to the cage. Oops. I have a quest question. Um, sure. Right in the, the caged area, the, the the portion that is extended out over. The roadway. What is that? What is that indicating? Right. Oh, yeah, right that. Yes. Yeah. This. This is the actual drainage line. It's, this is subsurface. Sorry. Okay, um, thank you. That's, that's yeah, all I wanted so, to know. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, right here. This line right here will be where the canopy drains into down these downspouts, and then it'll go into the existing um, catch basin right here. Um, thank you. And then we have a we have a sanitary line that. It, there's two floor drains. There's one in this area right here and one in the caged area underneath the canopy um, in this location. Those two lines will converge and then go into a um, oil water separator. And then that will proceed to the existing uh, sanitary line after the oil water separator. And we're not expecting um, much in, in for any affluent on this. Um, just in case that they do wash down something or something spills, it'll be, it'll be caught in this uh, <coughs> just in case because there is equipment that will be stored here. So that's the main reason for the oil water separator. Are you relocating that sewer line? The sewer line? No. Um, this yeah. gas line here, though, uh, there is a gas main that runs along the side and, and wraps around the building. Oops, sorry. Uh, we will have to relocate the gas main and come back down to tie back in um, oh, it looked like to it avoid it looked like yeah it sorry that's, that's yeah that's a that's a g um okay. but yeah that's the only utility that um so that we know of that actually runs along the side that we will have to relocate to accommodate the addition and the addition to of the cage where were they going to serve um, machines Say that again, Mike. Um, Where were the machines going to be serviced on site, or? Yeah, in in they'll they'll be they they can go into this cage area and they'll the service will be clean cleaning mostly. But if there's any, any mechanical, I, I believe they ship off site for any mechanical services. Um, um, it's a, this would just tiller. It needs an oil change. They're going to send it off site, have it serviced and brought back. I believe so. I don't think any of the services will be done on site. But I can definitely double check for the, for the commission. That, that's, an, that's an important uh, fact that needs to be clarified. Okay. Yeah, I believe there's only minor maintenance um, that'll occur at the store, but I can, yeah, definitely double check for you. Um, so moving on. Uh, oops, sorry. Okay, let's get back to service. Now, you're going to clean it. Yep. You're going to steam clean a lot of this stuff, right? Or hot pressure wash or whatever. 
all that sludge and all that grease and all that's going to go into the grease trap? Yeah. If, if they do it on site, it will, it will go through a grease trap. Yep. An oil water separator. Correct. Okay. Um, uh, to accommodate the building uh, and the cage area, we will be removing a portion of the paved area to the, to the, um, on the side here. Um, and then we will be trenching the, the uh, sanitary line to get back to existing um, sanitary in, in this location. Um, uh, we'll also be providing construction fencing um, to maintain the existing, uh, and then try to maintain the existing operations within the, the uh, uh, canopy area, uh, which is why we have a space here for uh, cars to be able to service, be, leave this area um, during construction. We're also putting a construction fence in the rear too. Uh, these will be serviced with two gates. So just in case fire needs to go through that, it will be, um, there'll be access. Uh, SEC measures, we're providing some silt sack uh, in the protection. Uh, luckily this, this site is within a low lying area. This is all coming down. Um, so everything will be, will be contained within the, the site improvements area. Um, and that's why we're, we're providing the silt sacks and the, the drainage and the, uh, the composite sock around uh, any um, material stockpile that we will have. Um, so it's a pretty simple SEC plan. And uh, we'll be main in the second phase when the building's being constructed, we'll maintain those SEC measures throughout until everything's stabilized and constructed and the pavement is in. And that's uh, pretty much the, the gist of the um, of, of the construction that of uh, the site improvements that we're planning to do with the building and in, in the cage there. <clears throat> um, so square footage again? Uh, 3,192. Plus the caged area. Plus the 1,500 square foot caged area, correct. So almost 5,000 feet. George, um, is that part of town zoned for any kind of like automobile automobile repair? I don't know the answer to that. It's an industrial zoning district. It so does allow for motor vehicle service and repair. It does allow for it? Yes, it does. Okay. But this is under a special permit, which restricts the uses that are available on the site. The special permit also allows for some flexibility on a footprint. So yes, it I does. I think we need to check that to see whether this needs a public hearing or whether it's a modification. Um, I also noticed that there's a, a letter of concern from the fire department concerning uh, access for the emergency vehicles. How was that being addressed? Michael, can I, can I jump in there? Sure. Uh, I talked to, uh, I called over for Captain Smith today to, to understand the concerns and he's out this week, but I did talk to Captain Brandolini who was able to express to me what he's concerned about. Um, he's concerned about fire access around the perimeter of the building. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Casey, can I share my screen just for a second? Yeah, sorry, let me just stop share. Thank you. So, um, I'm going to share this picture here, um, and then I'll go back to the other one. Uh, this is a Google Earth picture um, right now, of, and I'm not sure how recent it is, but um, as you can see over here, there's a we have a lot of outside storage and over here and in the back. And I don't know if you can see it, but can you see this red this red paint red uh, lines painted in the cement right here? Yeah, is that that's 25 feet of fire lane. Um, Captain Brandolini uh, pointed me to the proper section of the uh, CMR, section one, uh, CMR one area that the fire lane around the perimeter of the building calls for 20 feet. Uh, this has a 25 foot mark one in the back. However, you, the, the concern they have is you can see all the equipment and storage is going on behind the building here. Uh, we have equipment in the fire lane here. We have all this equipment in the sheds 
here, which all have to leave. Uh, because right now the, the, at this point on, at this point here at Lowe's, it's only 15 feet. So they're kind of out of, out of spec right now. Um, so we, we, what we have is a problem of what we're, what we're going to do with all this stuff. We've got to fix the fire lane here. We've got to fix the fire lane here. All this stuff has to go somewhere. Uh, parking spots are getting used up uh, over in this area with all the loam and whatnots there. I don't know what the parking space requirement is. I need to go look at the permit to know that and find out where they're at. They're using up parking spaces over on this section. So the concern from the fire department was fire lane access. Um, it is 20 feet it, uh, around the perimeter of the building. It's not 25 as indicated here, but it's certainly more than the 15 right here. Uh, if all this stuff goes away, there is 24 feet. And that was that's indicated on um, the other drawing. So what I'm trying to show you is I just lost it. Uh, share screen going back to the, that drawing. This this section right here will comply if there's nothing there. It has to be kept totally clear. This section back here will comply if it's kept totally clear. Um, this is where all, all these parking areas here are, are gone now. Um, all these are gone now. All this material has to go somewhere. All this material has to go somewhere. So Casey, what I'm suggest, what I'm going to suggest right now is that uh, not you as the engineer, but Lowe's operationally needs to come and tell us how they're going to uh, one, fix the fire lane problems that are there now, and two, if we approve this, uh, how they will continue to do that. Did that address your questions, Mike? It did. It did. It, the, the big question is, is once that addition goes in and all that material is moved, where does it move to? And how does it stay there? Right. And right. Because yeah. right now, in, especially in the springtime, like like we're in right now, um, they've got so much material out on the parking lot, taking up parking spaces, that on a busy Saturday or a Sunday, you can't beg, borrow, or steal a parking spot. So if they take away more parking spaces by removing all of the stored materials that's on that side of the building, does it in fact take them out of compliance with the required amount of parking spaces for that that's permit that would allow them to build that building in the first place? Well, I think um, there's room to slide that stuff forward on the property line to a less... Well, there is, but it, it, it's going to take up more parking spaces. Yeah, but those, they're, they're a little used. They're, you know, there's, it's kind of a about as far away from the building as you can get. So. Oh, yeah, trust me, I know. That's where I park, and my wife nags me when I do that. But My wife makes me drive around to get a front row. Oh, no, no. I park in the farthest <laughs> corner I can find. I don't want anybody near my truck. So and, but, anyway, and I'm glad to get people to go through the mulch pile the right direction would yeah. be good. Yeah, but that, I mean, that material down the side of that building, you're talking about a lot of stuff. That, that, that's not a small pile of stuff. There's a lot of material there. You're going to chew up that, a ton of parking spaces moving that stuff forward. That was, uh, that was exactly Camp, Captain Brandolini's uh, point. Uh, he thinks this is totally doable. He supports Lowe's and wants to be a good business partner. Uh, with them. He just needs to see how we fix the, the two violations that I see anyway, and how uh, Lowe's comes back to us operationally uh, with a plan to uh, maintain it. Mm -hmm. So Casey, uh, that's, that's not necessarily an engineering question, but much more, as I said, an operational question. I find it interesting that they have a Main Street address when William Crossing is on Cranberry Avenue. <laughs> I suppose they yeah, we to... definitely we have we have contact with um, Lowe's operation manager in this in this location, and we can definitely uh, provide even create a plan to figure out um, how this is going to work with their existing materials. And maybe they don't even need all of that. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll we'll work on something and definitely get it to you guys um, for your review. You under you understand the point, though. I hope. 
Yes. Yeah. That completely makes sense. I, I understand. Now, I, what I don't really know, and, and all I can tell you for parking wise is um, we have a property line that, that we had delineated um, and within it, we have an amount, amount of spaces. Um, and I believe we had uh, existing spaces of 492. Um, this development does take away 45 spaces with what we're proposing with the outdoor display, the new outdoor display in the, in the front there and with this drive aisle along the side, um, bringing us down to 447. Now I know Lowe's operationally, typically they need about 400 to 390 for a building this size. Um, but town requirements do, is 569 if you do the one space for 300 and, um, and then you add that another uh, 4,692 uh, for both the, the uh, addition in the cage area. So we're, we're looking at about 569 that's town required, but originally they had 553 without that and I only get 449 within the property limits. I know this is part of a larger development and I'm not sure um, the special permit that I did review from the town, it doesn't really give a clear indication on what was required for parking. So if you guys do find anything for that, uh, please let me know, because that will definitely be helpful in, you know, maneuvering this material and, and providing um, uh, locations for the stuff that's not in the parking, for sure. I think it's very important, um, um, Casey, that, I mean, I've heard comments and Mike's heard comments about the parking that, if we're going to approve a plan to further reduce, um, yep. we, need to we need to understand this very, very clearly so we can feel justified in doing this, especially with the seasonal parking uh, spot usage for mulch and in the garden center. Understood. Okay. And Charlie, I will try again to get into the registry of deeds and pull that permit. I mean, I've done it once in my life and it was painful. I have all your instructions. I'll do it again. <laughs> and this is before us as a look-see or? It's a modification of special permit site plan review. Okay. So I guess the first thing we'll have... a minor modification, you can uh, approve it uh, as is with the conditions that you apply, uh, or you can find it as a major modification and take it to a public hearing. Uh, oh, Mr. I... Chairman, this is this is Richard. I would I would propose we plan or consider this for a minor, but we hear, first we hear back from Lowe's operations on how, what they're going to do with all this section of excess material. Yeah. And I think, I think we also put in the special permit, a description of what we could accept as minor. So I think we uh, need to pull that out and see, I think it was a percentage of floor space that could be, a lot, could be approved without a public hearing. So we'll check that out and uh, we'll look and see what uh, they're proposing for the fire lane. And I, I know on occasion they like to unload trucks over there because they can't get through. <laughs> <clears throat> but that won't, they won't be able to after this. It won't be practical. So let me see where we're at. <laughs> Oh, can't do it now. That's it on the agenda. No, I'm just looking at does need a continuance or you don't need a continuance, no. Okay. Now will will there be any um kind of comment letter that that will be developed or, or just kind of take what you guys said and try to prepare something. I know that you received something from the fire department. Is, is there any way that we could receive those comments? Um, just so I can go back to Lowe's and explain, well, you guys clearly stated what you need, but um, they, they're the, you know, they like to see documents. So um, I didn't know if we could, we had access to any of that. I think you should approach the fire department and uh, negotiate the, uh, 
the requirements with them. Okay. Now, Ken, I have this shown on the agenda as a public hearing. Is that accurate? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> It was not advertised. Okay. So we'll get some answers for this and uh, set uh, something up. When's our next meeting? Um, 20... 24th. 24th. Well, we can find out between now and then what's uh, what's required if we read over that special permit. If you have a meeting set up for executive session with the town council, it's possible uh, if it's on a different date that you could adjust it uh, before the 24th. <coughs> yeah, at least you we think, can give them, give them an indication as to which way we gotta go. You think we could uh, pull the, the, uh, the executive session off a week from tonight? Uh, to town council. I think we're generally here on Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, that's his office hours. Uh, if you want a meeting uh, with him on executive session, it's uh, you could do it in the evening sometime as well. Yeah, we could do it Zoom. Yes. All right, we'll see what we can set up. How do you do an executive session on Zoom? That's a good one. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a way to do it. You only invite those that... You don't allow people into the into the session. Yep. You just uh, watch out for the open mic. Yeah. All right. Um, so we will... You're going to follow up on what the fire department does requesting a well george if i could the fire department's only going to dictate what they need for an alley for the equipment that, that's not going to address how they're going to deal with the material that's there now is it no longer going to be on site where is it going to be moved to how many spaces does it take up I, i'm not sure the fire department is the one to address that that particular question well i you know they they've shown it but Apparently, express some concern about what it looks like in practice. Yeah, Oops. yeah. But I, there's, there, I think there's two twofold concern. One is to make sure, as Richard stated, that the the, the pathway for emergency vehicles is kept to standards. But if they're planning on retaining those materials and moving them forward into the parking lot, how much further does that diminish the available parking? No, that's where the review of the special permit will come in. We can yeah. figure out if they're cutting themselves short. Uh, well, I think during uh, during during mulch season, they're, they're definitely shooting themselves in the foot because you, you, I mean, you lose four full rows of parking in the gardening area while the mulch is out there. Well, Casey, if I may. Um, I've, I've read the letter from the fire department. There's not a lot of detail there other than there's concerns. And the concerns that they'll tell you are exactly what Michael just said. 20 foot access around the building for fire apparatus. Uh, how are you gonna maintain that 20 foot? And what are you gonna, and how many parking spaces are you gonna chew up with outside storage when you move all the stuff that's in the way now? So, but I encourage yeah, you to talk to him. Uh, I, I'll definitely do that, and I'll, I'll definitely talk with the operation manager of this building as well um, to see what we can do um, for sure. Yeah, call call the fire department. Um, it's Brandolini, B-R-A-N-D-O-L-I-N-I, -I. James is his first name. He's a captain there. Um, he's not the captain that wrote the letter. The captain that wrote the letter is out the rest of this week. But he's, uh, he did the site visit with him, so he's uh, very familiar with the situation. Will do.
George, before you uh, ask for an adjournment motion, I would like to um, add a comment under other business slash discussion. Is that the uh, public uh, comment period? Regarding that, yes. <laughs> no, I was just looking back at the uh, agenda. Um, Yeah, go ahead and uh, throw out your suggestion there. Uh, all right. So um, we, as a board, have met, uh, we have public hearings and continued public hearings where we can get public input uh, a lot, uh, and that's and that's by law, and that's how it should be. Um, we have a fairly lax attitude about uh, letting the public uh, discuss topics as they come up on our agenda. Sometimes I think that's to our disadvantage. Oftentimes it's for our advantage. And so you, Mr. Chairman, have to balance that and you do that fairly well. Maybe I'd be a little stricter than you, but that's fine. But um, in discussing this with other people, a comment was made that we should, I, um, I had originally suggested um, that maybe we should have an agenda item at the top of every meeting for general public input. Um, a counter offer I heard to that was to have a general comment section at the top of every meeting concerning uh, the master plan. Um, and I've thought about this a lot and it does make sense to me um, that we have a, a, a uh, agenda item early in our meeting where we ask the public to give us comment, feedback, suggestions, on maintaining and growing um, the master plan. Um, I think that's a good idea. I know the master plan has areas in it that I think need to be updated in the almost two years now since uh, we approved it. I think that would give people an opportunity to comment on just about anything they want to. But if we do it with the belief that it's going to be driven toward uh, a master plan update or change, I think all the better. Um, I just like to throw that out for the members to consider and maybe we bring in and then we could talk about it at, at a future meeting um, as to what you think. I don't want you necessarily to respond now. I'd like you to think about it a little bit, but if you want to respond, feel free. But um, I think public input is a very good thing if we control it and do it correctly. So that's that's all I have to say for now. Okay. I have a, a request. I believe Mr. Swenson uh, mentioned that he had a set of instructions on how to access special permits at the Registry of Deeds. I'll uh, send them out. Oh, great! Thank you. You're welcome. So, anything further this evening? We also have the special permits on file in the in the uh, planning board and zoning board of appeals records, so you can uh, get a copy of them there. That you mean a hard copy? You can get an electronic copy as well. Okay, I I haven't been able to find them very well on the website. So Ken, if you just kind of point me in the right direction offline, that'd be great. Um, I'm still having trouble finding the finance warrants, the finance report with the warrants on it. I still can't find <laughs> that document. Oh boy. Carl, you and I need to talk offline. We have, we have some things in common that maybe we can work on. Um, great, I, I would love to. I'm, uh, yes, anytime. All right, I'll reach out. Motion to adjourn, Chairman? Sure. Okay. Who made that motion? Richard did. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Multiple. If there's no further discussion, uh, Carl, all in favor? Aye. Richard? Aye. Sam? Aye. Mike Baptiste? Aye. Mike King? Aye. And I for the chair. Good night, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Thanks for tuning in.